Hello YouTube, D. Badger here. <clears throat> so, uh, this is not uncommon for me, that I buy some new toy, and then before I ever even ride it, I just take it to bits. So, that's what I did. Um, this is a Gotway uh, M103 uh, electric unicycle. Uh, it, it arrived at my house hours ago. Um, it is right now uh, 11 p.m. and it arrived at my door at 4 p.m. so I had to finish my work day and then the next thing I did was take it apart because <laughs> I really was curious to see how shitty or good these things were and um, so I have to say that if you're worried about things like oh I don't know fire hazard death injury things like that you should never buy an electric unicycle you just shouldn't because well, they're just dangerous as hell, and I'll get into that as I go along. So anyway, you could say that the name of these videos is Why You Should Never Buy an Electric Unicycle. But the truth of the matter is, um, I'm going to learn how to ride this damn thing <laughs> after I fix some of its more egregious sins. So uh, let me get into that and move along. So anyway, um, here is some of its bits, and here's some of its other bits down there, you know, mixed among a motor that I re I've rewound and other things. But anyway, yeah, it's all in pieces on my desk at the moment. Uh, but that's easy enough. I can put it back together again without any trouble. All right, so this is the stator of the uh, motor. So it had a little dinky hub motor in there. And I want to point out a few details about it. So the first thing I want to point out is that this motor has no lacquer in it of, all, of any kind. It has nothing securing the windings in any way. So like if you look at, at this uh, phase winding right here, so you can see that I can just move the strands. There's nothing holding them down. So over time, vibration in the motor will cause those strands to vibrate together and against the windings next to them, and they'll wear their insulation off, and then the motor will short out. So uh, bad, <laughs> not very good, but hey, this is China, and they do everything they possibly can to cut corners, and they really have. Um, this right here, underneath this uh, little white piece, um, that is the uh, connection where all three starts of the phases come together, because this motor is wired up Y. Um, so that's those starts all uh, wired together. Haven't pulled this off to see if that's soldered together or whatever. I I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared, because <laughs> it's probably really hideous under there. Um, this probably isn't going to show up on camera so well. Let me see if I can't get a little bit more light on it. But right there, that is a bunch of strands and there is no insulation. Uh, whoever uh, sanded these wires bare or however they did it, um, they went too far and they sanded all the way down and so there are bare strands of wire right here uh, just coming out of the motor uh, you know with no protection on of any kind and of course you know with all these you know loose strands here like you can see that that's totally loose uh, and that's everywhere on the motor. Um, so this motor is not going to last very long. Uh, I know people, you know, buy these things and they keep them for just a few years. But come on, China, seriously, <laughs> not everybody's going to be that person. You know, like like me, for example, um, I will probably keep, uh, you know, whatever one wheel I keep or unicycle or whatever you want to call them for a really long ass time. So, uh, and, and then I will probably modify the daylights out of it. So there's certain things like this that are problematic. Um, and this is another one too. So this is the hall board, and so here's your three halls right there. Um, there's a little bit of thermal glue right here, but it is literally gluing that piece of paper down underneath the um, the hall board. So you know it's like an insulator between the hall board and the and the uh, phase windings. However, there is nothing that holds the hall board down. Um, it well almost nothing. The thing that's holding it down is the three halls legs and the fact that the wires are pulled tight. Otherwise, it's absolutely floating there. There's nothing holding it in place. <clears throat> so, in many ways, oh my god, what a shitty motor. <laughs> really, really low quality. Mini quarters cut. Uh, here is the other side of the uh, stator. And uh, you can see, I'll just kind of pan around that. You can see plenty of places. Oh, come on camera, focus. You see plenty of places where the windings are all rumpled and they're not straight and they're crumpled up and loose and stuff yeah I'm just gonna say not very good folks um, 
yeah, if you're looking for quality, this isn't it, okay? Just throwing it out there. This isn't it. Uh, I don't know what that is, but um, that looks like about 35 millimeters across, so it's a decent sized stator. It's just wound for shit. Um, all right, so the uh, last thing I want to talk about here before I move on to a few other things. Uh, so this is one of the two axle bearings. Uh, it is a 6003 RS, that's what it says right there on the label. And right here it says the uh, manufacturer label or logo of CHL. Um, so Chinese Hong Lo bearing, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, lots of people, uh, you know, looking on YouTube and forums and things like that, they talk about needing to replace bearings in their wheels. Well, I totally understand why. Because this wheel has literally seen zero use. Uh, you know, maybe somebody wrote it somewhere, but it hasn't been written by me, and it literally arrived hours ago. So these bearings are pretty minty fresh. However, um, uh, they are pretty stiff. There's a lot of friction in, you know, rolling friction in the bearing. And then um, they wobble uh, up and down like this, you know, across the bearings. There's a lot less, but there is still play in there but wobbling and then pulling up and down. Uh, these are supposed to be deep groove bearings, which means they can take a certain amount of, of lateral loading on them. And I would have to say, yeah, not very much, because, I mean, they're already sloppy loose. So probably before I even put this motor back together again, uh, I will either scrounge through my bearings, because hopefully I have some 6003 bearings um, that are made by, like, NSK or something, and they will go on the motor, uh, just because those ones are just right out of the box shit. All right. So here's one of the motor covers. Uh, this is about the only thing that indicates who this motor is made by. So scratched into the casting um, that this uh, piece of whatever it is was cast into is uh, some scratches in there. And that says YT with an underscore or maybe YI. Um, this one uh, is similar. It says Y. Come on, camera, can you see that? Yeah, it says YTI in there. You know, and it's like it was scratched into the casting uh, with, with some sort of a sharp tool. Not machined or anything like that. Literally scratched in. All right, so um, in, inside here, this bearing carrier piece, that's fairly well reinforced. It could be better, but um, that's not too bad. Uh, I, I would like to see a little bit more metal around there, but eh, okay. <clears throat> All right, so the other side here, um, this is kind of telling. So you see all these little nubs on here and these four little um, machined off spots. So every single one of those things are machined with M3 threads. Uh, and all I can say is, why? <laughs> you don't need that for this thing. This is a unicycle. It doesn't take a uh, you know, brake rotor on it. Uh, there's nothing that you mount here. Uh, you know, the only thing that happens is the axle comes out that hole. That's it. So what the heck is all this other stuff? Well, the answer is obviously this motor was meant for something else, and then somebody went, oh, hey, let's put it on an electric unicycle. So they did. All right, so let's move on to the next part. This is the uh, magnet uh, ring in here. Oh, I guess I should, before I move on to that, uh, I wanted to point out that there are 27 stator teeth around here. And I'd have to say that that's a little high. Uh, you really, for a little motor like this, uh, 27 stator teeth is a lot, and there's 24 magnets in here. Um, you know, a lot of outrunners, like say that Revolt outrunner right there, uh, it has 14 magnets. Yeah, 14 magnets. So far, far fewer. Uh, and then it's got, um, uh, well, it's got 12 stator teeth. So anyway, it's a much bigger motor, and yet it has... Uh, far few stator teeth and far fewer magnets. Um, th this is this is a thing that China is so good for. You know, let, let's let's cut corners in any way that we possibly can to build something that you know works. But hey, it's a piece of shit. But hey, it works. Uh, so you know they do things like putting lots of stator teeth in when it's you know not needed because they're trying to go for you know more power, more speed, and yet you know we don't care about like efficiency or motor performance. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> so back to the magnet ring. Um, I have done the screwdriver test, uh, but I also have a Gauss meter. And when I put my screwdriver on a magnet and pull away, uh, the magnets are fairly strong, but I would say they're like probably in 30s in there. Uh, so that's probably reasonably good for considering how this is a egregiously cheap um, Chinese uh, hub motor. Um, this piece right here is 
if this was steel, it would be magnetic because the magnets are touching it, but it's not. It completely does not attract the screwdriver in any way. And the truth of the matter is, the back side of your magnet ring, you want to have a steel ring in there. So all of this should be steel or cast iron or something like that, and it's not. It's actually cast aluminum. Uh, the whole point of that is, is you want to enclose your magnets inside a, a shielded layer. Um, you know, for example, like that outrunner right, right there, uh, that silver area on there is basically a thick band of steel. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I, when I touch my screwdriver on here, there, there is no magnetic attraction, just a little tiny bit. And it's basically because that thick bit of steel right there completely encases the magnetic field inside. Whereas in this thing here, that's not the case. There is absolutely no shielding on this motor at all. The magnets are just blasting their magnetic field outward, which makes the motor less effective. All right, so let's flip this bad boy over uh, and talk about the tire. Okay, so I looked on eBay for M10 uh, 3 tires, and I came across the guy that was selling them, and, and uh, the numbers that had on the tire was 10-3.00-6.5. Um, well, what I can tell you about 10-3 or 10-3.00 is that it's an exceedingly common size tire that you will find on 50cc size scooters. And well, it's a lot bigger than that one. I could show you a comparison, but why bother? So these numbers on here, I, I honestly don't know what they mean. So what is that like? 10 inches across or something, and that other number was, uh, I don't know, maybe six and a half millimeter or centimeters wide. I honestly don't know what those numbers mean. All right, so this is a little bit interesting. Um, if you look at the M103s, they are rated up to 200 pounds, but right here on the tire, it says 155 pounds. Um, well, I'm just gonna say that I weigh a smidge more than 155 pounds. <clears throat> Great, thanks so much guys. Uh, also, the valve stem. Uh, here, let me put a cover on there. Yeah, there we go. So, you can see how low that valve stem sits. It is virtually impossible to get at it. If you lose air, you get a flat tire, whatever, you're not getting at that valve stem because it is utterly buried. It is completely inaccessible. So, um, before I go anywhere with this thing, I will be pulling this tire off that rim, I will be pulling that bloody tube out of there, and I have some tubeless valve stems that are really tiny, and I'm going to stick one in there that sticks out either straight or at a slight angle, uh, so that I can get that valve stem cleared, because it is absolutely buried in here, it's impossible to get at it. I don't know how they filled this tire up with this, with it all assembled like this, they probably had to really jack this thing back, because, I mean, if you do that, you're going to cut the tube, it's not a good idea, uh, so that's probably what they did. Anyway, yeah, really, really not thought out. And by the way, tubeless, you know, you can put like stands inside the tire. And if you do get a puncture, uh, you know, let the stands fill the hole. So a uh, simple solution, in which case you'll probably get less flats than you will with a tube tire. So, uh, yeah, I think that's video one. Um, basically, uh, shitty tire, shitty motor, uh, <laughs> shitty valve stem. I'm really not very happy with this. And especially not when you consider that you pay nearly 900 bucks for it. All right, end of this video.